some of the presidential directives which are still in place and some new ideas. In line with the directive to avoid crowded places where transmission has been shown to be more likely, we once again emphasize that all public gatherings and in-person meetings of whatever nature are suspended countrywide. In this regard, all governments, including intergovernmental meetings and conferences, should henceforth be converted to either virtual or postponed. And there are several meetings that even the government itself had planned in the coming 30 days. All forms of physical congregational worship in a country, churches, mosques, and temples, be permitted as per the guidance of, of the Interfaith Council and the Interfaith Protocols that have been developed, but which of recent, in the recent past, seem to have been abused. In-person worship should be limited to a third of the capacity of the venue in strict adherence with the guidelines and protocols of the Ministry of Health. While indoors, maintain a physical distance of at least one meter between people. It is not enough that we have one third of the people inside the church. The idea is to distance. That's why we have got one third. So there should be at least a meter between people. All restaurants and eateries to ensure that they operate in strict adherence to the protocols provided by the Ministry of Health. Again, there seems to have been a move backwards as far as that particular measure is concerned. There will be strict adherence to the measures. The hours of the ongoing national curfew to continue across the country from 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. This applies now to the counties in the Lake region as well. All employers, including public and private sector, government offices, business and companies, be directed to allow employees to work from home with the exception of employees working in critical or essential services until further notice. All healthcare workers are directed to use the recently revised Ministry of Health national guidelines for case management of suspected or confirmed cases of COVID-19. Members of the public are strongly advised against self-medicating and the use of over-the-counter medicines for treatment of respiratory tract infections and to seek medical attention from qualified healthcare workers. We have lost a few individuals as a result of, this, of not following this particular measure. We continue to implore all Kenyans, including those who have received the COVID-19 vaccines, not to let their guard down and urge them to avoid unnecessary movements and gatherings, employ physical distancing, observe strict heart hygiene, and the proper passionate use of face masks both indoors and outdoors. Recent, recent reports globally indicate that even persons who have, been, who have been vaccinated can contact the virus. The difference is that those who have been vaccinated are getting the disease but with less severity. So it is advised that whether you have been vaccinated or not vaccinated, that you observe the rules as have been spelled out. As the government continues to make every effort to avail vaccines, we strongly encourage Kenyans to get vaccinated against COVID-19, as will be guided from time to time. The vaccines that we are expecting in the next week or two we will follow the same pattern that we had before, the above 58 persons with, with uh, comorbidities, individuals who are frontline workers, 
and, and so on and so forth. The committee also noted with concern the weak link in the fight against the pandemic is a non-compliance of individuals to containment measures and protocols and enforcement of the same. The committee therefore urges every Kenyan to take individual responsibility and be part of the solution. And today, what we would like to urge is that every stakeholder, every institution, to bring in their own areas the theme of be part of the solution. Do not be part of the problem. Be part of the solution. As individuals, we must ask ourselves whether our behavior is contributing to the solution or our behavior is contributing to the problem. We continue to emphasize that it is not possible for police to police every individual individually. And therefore, where there has been success elsewhere, where there has been success globally in maintaining and containing this virus, it is because individuals have paid specific, have taken up upon themselves to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Further, the committee noted that the response to COVID-19 is not just a health matter and has encouraged all sectors to get involved and specific sector leads in government and private sector to engage their respective stakeholders in defining the enforcement measures required. Sectors of particular interest are trade and industrialization, transport, education, interior and interfaith council, sectors will lead in to be in addressing the country on these measures in the following few days. With regard to the education sector, the current evidence and data does not reflect increased cases among learning institutions, notwithstanding the morbidity and mortality among school going children has been extremely low. For that reason, and in the meantime, to ensure safe and continued learning in our education institutions, all teachers are strongly implored to present themselves for vaccination against COVID-19. This is to safeguard not only the future generation by ensuring that we continue with the education in our schools, but also is to protect the teachers themselves, particularly those of bar 58 who we have continued to implore to work from home. With regards to counties, as the government makes arrangements to install oxygen plants, counties are urged to ramp up efforts to install oxygen piping in their healthcare facilities to ensure maximum utilization of the plants. There are about 23 counties that are going to be receiving oxygen plants by the end of August. And for them to be effective, for the plants to be effective, there has to be piping in the hospitals where these oxygen plants are being installed. And therefore, as far as those counties are concerned, and indeed in all counties, what we are asking is that we pipe the oxygen instead of relying on oxygen cylinders. This is because as we stand currently, our hospitals are fairly full, and we want to emphasize that the saving grace in most of the case management is the presence of oxygen or the availability of oxygen. Experience in other countries also showed that those countries that had sufficient oxygen managed to save more people than those without. And it's not just oxygen, it's oxygen that is properly examined of a, a quality that passes the standards that we have set to ensure that uh, people are saved. We urge the counties to actively also ramp up the necessary infrastructure, including the critical care facilities, the isolation centers, human resource, 
and testing capacity. And in terms of the testing capacity, the national government will also be placing PCR test capacities across the counties and increase uh, over and above the over 20 testing facilities to make sure that almost every county has got a testing facility. Counties are also urged to ensure that they have adequate PPEs in all the hospitals, including the level two and level three hospitals, where more and more people are presenting themselves. And for the healthcare workers to ensure that as a matter of procedure, as a matter of regular work, they stay protected with the proper PPEs because persons are walking into hospitals and uh, if you contact the disease at that point, then uh, we have the same challenges that we began at the end, at the beginning of, of this year. And in this regard, the Ministry of Health had, has also directed that KEMSA uh, supplies PPEs to counties even if, despite their pending bill status, because there are counties that are saying that they are unable to get uh, PPEs on grounds that um, they have not been paid by the Treasury, in turn, KEMSA is refusing to give uh, them. So NAC has directed that uh, in, it doesn't matter whether a county has paid uh, his account or not, let every county give, be given the PPEs that are required for protection of, the, of our people. And finally, is to ensure that we enforce the 72-hour period of disposal of our deceased persons and to ensure that licensed funeral homes adhere to these guidelines. One of the reasons why this is so critical is because of, as people, if we have people staying in hospitals for too long before disposal, what is happening is that then people start funeral meetings and in those funeral meetings, we are experiencing increased transmissions. So we would urge that uh, within, the 72, within 72 hours, we try and rest our loved ones. And we are grateful, particularly to the Muslim community, because of the examples they have shown in terms of disposal in accordance with their religion. But also we would urge the rest of, the, of Kenyans that this is one time when we would urge that no matter how we feel, no matter how pained we are, we still need to adhere to the rules. And uh, the funeral homes, including government, mortuaries, and institutions, have been asked to ensure that this is what has happened, and this is what should be done. Again, on the issue of uh, funeral, service, funeral services and barriers, we have also emphasized that GAO will forthwith, and they will be calling a meeting, Interior will be calling a meeting to discuss this matter with chiefs, sub-chiefs, and other enforcement agencies to ensure that uh, funerals are attended by the 50 people that we had proposed earlier, because if we do not follow those protocols, then we will be going to bury our loved ones and then follow with more funerals of the same people uh, from the same families, as has been evidenced in some of the cases that we are now dealing with. So ladies and gentlemen, the main, the main issue today was to deal with the situation as we see it, to emphasize some of the measures that are already there, but also to warn that we cannot hesitate to take even further measures if we see that um, the adherence to the measures that we are taking are low, of, of uh, importance is also the emphasis on the stoppage of gatherings, even those of a political nature. And I want to emphasize here again that we want to be part of the solution. And we are asking those in politics, those practicing political meetings, to be part of the solution instead of creating epicenters of spreading of the disease. So I want to uh, pause there for a minute and ask uh, the IG to weigh in on this issue as uh, I come back with some of the uh, other figures that exist, that, that, that we have today.
Thank you, CS. Mine is directions and uh, instructions, which I want to give today to all the all commanders and uh, police officers of National Police Service across the country on two directions and uh, instructions. All the protocols, CS Mutai Kagwe, as I lighted them, the National Police Service is to enforce that all these protocols are complied. And in that regard, I give instructions to all officers of the National Police Service with effect from today that all those protocols to be enforced and measures stepped up. We will take responsibility. Secondly, I'm asking all the members of public to cooperate with the police. You keep yourself safe and I promise and assure you that you have no problem with police. Be in the right place at the right time. During the curfew, I would urge all the members of public to stay at home. I have no other new instruction I'm giving because my simple job is to enforce this no public gathering, political rallies. We are not going to have discussion of these matters. Officers take instruction on this, including the commanders. Those meetings have already been prohibited. Ours is to ensure that no such gatherings which endangers the life of the other citizens. You play your part as members of public. The officers of National Police Service will also be able to cooperate with you. When you don't cooperate, we will use all measures to ensure that you are going to cooperate. All the protocols have been stipulated, highlighted. The, the members of National Police Service is to enforce them. And uh, I give direction to all commanders to ensure compliance of all those protocols. As and then is honor. Uh, thank you very much, IG. I think that uh, the only other thing to, 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 to emphasize as I conclude is, that, uh, is, to, is to appeal to Kenyans that the reason why we are doing these things I, is now evident. A while back, we did tell Kenyans that it is important for us to have facilities, ICU facilities, and other facilities within the counties. Today, the Nairobi hospitals are stretched to a limit. And the, and, and the truth of the matter is that if you fall sick today within this, country, within this county, you are very unlikely to get a hospital bed. And it is good to call a spade a spade instead of a big spoon. Because the truth of the matter is that we are sitting between a difficult situation, we are sitting at, in difficult times, we are increasing the ICU capacity. We are increasing the ICU capacity in KU, in Kenyatta National Hospital. I am aware that Nairobi Hospital is also increasing its ICU capacity uh, by, by some 20 beds. We are increasing by some 28 beds at KU. But the truth of the matter is that unless we can contain it at this level, unless we can stop the transmission right now, then it is possible that our health system is going to be overwhelmed. And when that happens, then you have got the scenes like you see in other countries, you saw it in India, where a person dies right in front of a hospital and there is nothing that the doctors can do. So if this is not scaring people. This is more to emphasize the need for each person to protect him or herself. We need to protect ourselves. Because, as I said, you cannot afford to be taken to a hospital 
where there is no capacity to take care of you. And as we speak, some 400, you know, and, six, uh, and uh, nearly 450 patients are on oxygen. They are on oxygen, directly on oxygen. And that is not including the 175 patients who are in ICUs. And as you know, most hospitals don't have that, that much capacity for uh, ICUs. We have got 1,432 patients across the country who are now hospitalized. And that is not including the nearly 4,000 who are in home-based care. And as, and as for the home-based care people, we are also saying just because you are being treated at home does not mean that you do not need to check with the doctors and constant supervision to ensure that you continue to be safe. There are some people who deteriorate when they are at home, so those observing them need to make sure that the minute you see a person who is on home-based care begin to cough more or to get a bit sicker, then it is important for them to be taken to hospital immediately. Our positivity rate continues to be high. Today, uh, as you know, uh, yesterday we had uh, over 14%. Today, we still have over 13% uh, in terms of positivity rate. And those are high numbers because what you are saying that is that in every 100 people, 13 people uh, are infected. And therefore, we continue to urge uh, our people, all Kenyans, uh, to be careful. And when you say 13 people, that's an average. So when you take an average, it means in some, there are some counties that are very, very low and some counties that are very, very high. The document that the media is going to be given includes the positivity rates in terms of county by county. And some counties have got a high positivity rate, particularly the counties that, the county that we are currently, uh, we are currently in. So we would like to urge care, and I keep on saying, let's be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I repeat what we said in this same uh, place sometime last year. Let's never, ever, ever think that we can treat this disease normally. I thank you. Thank you very much, Waziri. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is your turn now to ask questions. Please remember your name and the media house you present and keep it uh, within the scope of today's briefing. Thank you. Who would wish to go first? Uh, Zainab Mohammed, TV 47. Buenos yes, uh, On the ban on political gatherings, it has been placed before, and yet we have seen political rallies being conducted countrywide. So my question is, what will be different this time round? And then number two, in terms of COVID-19 in schools, there was a school yesterday in near Ingorano Secondary School that recorded a total of 104 cases out of 118 samples. What will the ministry do to ensure that our kids are safe in school now that they're all back in school? Thank you. Uh, my name is Chemutai Goin from Citizen TV, and I just have one question. Uh, some studies uh, internationally have shown that Moderna and Pfizer seem to be quite effective on the Delta variant. And uh, we wanted to know whether, as Kenya, it's part of the consideration in terms of dealing uh, with, the, with the virus and whether we can adopt the mix and match approach. And if we are to do that, is there an order in which the vaccine will be administered? Because some studies have shown that you start with AstraZeneca, then you go to Pfizer or Moderna. Thank you. Uh, my name is Seth Olale from NTV. Uh, we have some people who got the first jab of the vaccine. They have been infected and they are asking even when they get back to negative, they, do they start all over again? Or the first dose is just uh, efficient for them? And just to reiterate what my colleague asked, uh, Mr. IG, uh, politicians are still defying the government's directive. What they'll do, they'll go to church, and when they leave that church, just at the doorstep, they will wave at the congregation and pull a crowd so this, the presidential directive has been so clear, but months later down the line, nothing is happening. We are seeing those politicians being super spreaders, but nothing is being done. Is it just a matter of talking, or will we be seeing stringent action? Thank you. Yeah. 
My name is Philip Murutu from K24 TV. Uh, my question pertains to uh, the transport industry. Uh, we have seen uh, the laxity, uh, the material industry, going back to the full capacity uh, uh, operation. Uh, we are observing, in those that are observing, they're observing inside the Matatu, but do in the uh, bus stations, you find crowds. I don't know what is being done uh, in, in regards to the transport industry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me start with the, um, the, the last one uh, by uh, Philip on the issue of transport. As I said uh, earlier, we, n we want to start uh, sectorial meetings, sectoral meetings in the next few days, starting from Monday. So the transport sector will be meeting under the guidance of the um, uh, transport uh, secretary, uh, C.S. Macharia, as well as the stakeholders, the Matatu industry, as well as the Ministry of Health officials to determine what is it that we need to be doing in order to ensure that um, those people also stay safe and the people being transported also stay safe. As I said, and I want to emphasize again, yes, you can be riding in a matatu, but the matatu, the matatu conductors are the ones who are going to, they, they will emphasize that you wear a mask when you are within the matatu. But surely there is a limit to how much even the drivers and the matatu conductors can do in terms of emphasizing it. My, my uh, advice to them would be that do not carry a passenger who is not wearing a mask. It's as simple as that because if the police come and there is a passenger not wearing a mask, the person who is in problems is a matato driver and a matato conductor. But I will let them give you their position. They will be holding a press conference, uh, I believe either on Monday or Tuesday, and they will give all the guidelines. They are already there, but each section next week there are several uh, stakeholder meetings and stakeholder press conferences that are going to be held across the country to ensure that, um, that uh, the, 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 we follow the law. Before I ask uh, the IG to comment on the issues that you have raised, Seth, and also um, the issue of the super spreaders, because essentially that is what it is. It is super spreading. When you call a political gathering in a street, where there are so many people and you can see the waving and what have you, it is just literally super spreading. And you know, by the way, and I have said this before, but I want to repeat it for whatever it is worth, that number one is that uh, there is no point of carrying out uh, all these rallies and then we just follow with all these deaths. And then when the deaths come, we go to the funerals and then follow with, with even more funerals. At the end of the day, it is the average Kenyan who is suffering. It is the average Kenyan who is going to have this problem. It is because of those kind of people that we have to take measures that may cost Kenyans jobs. It is because of those kind of people who are acting in a manner that you send you to hospital. And I guarantee you, when you are in a hospital bed, when you are looking for oxygen, they won't be there. They will not be there with you. You will be alone. You will be gasping for breath on your own. And no politician is going to be there at that time. In fact, the only government body you will be thinking about is, is asking why the Ministry of Health is not giving you oxygen. Never mind that the Ministry of Health told you not to go so that you need oxygen. So please, please, if somebody is calling for a political gathering, why do you have to go? Why do you have to go? Is it a matter of collecting money? Then collect the money and go home. You don't have to listen. So, anyway. On the issue of uh, mix and match, um, I am going to ask uh, Dr. Kuria, who is here, uh, to talk to the issue of Seth about the first jab, and also um, Moderna and Pfizer, and the second uh, jab, and the issue of uh, mix and much. And then uh, we could ask the, the IG to have the last word on your, on your question. Dr. Kuria. Thank you very much, uh, CS, members of the Father State. This issue, I think, has been discussed severally in a number of our briefings recently. 
and it continues to elicit uh, different reactions in people. And I think it's based on a study conducted, a few studies though, that have shown effective, the more efficacy of uh, certain vaccines given one following the other. And I think specifically it was about Pfizer given after AstraZeneca showing more efficacy and probably eliciting more immune response. And therefore, a few jurisdictions adopting that mode of mix and match AstraZeneca then followed by Pfizer. There are, of course, certain uh, regulatory issues that will arise from that and that the National Task Force on the Vaccine Rollout is addressing noting that the WHO has not given any specific commendations on this mix and match. And uh, different jurisdictions have been left to issue guidances that are country specific based on those few studies that have been done. As a ministry also based on our shortages in uh, vaccines and the supply chain challenges that we have, I'm sure that I can confirm to you that the National Task Force on Vaccine Law is considering this and the best option they're going to adopt and this will be advised in due course. In the meantime, we are still encouraging that those who got AstraZeneca initially, it's an encouraged that you still get your AstraZeneca if you can get it. As we continue, we will advise them later on how that mix and match is going to work in the country. You are also aware about the issue about uh, recent concerns, initial concerns of the effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine on the beta variant, which I think has since been debunked and uh, the vaccines that we are using today, AstraZeneca, I think are active, are effective against other variants that we've identified here. I think we have noticed, notified earlier that all the variants are prevalent, are circulating in the country, the Alpha, the Beta, and the Delta. Although, as we, noted, we have advised earlier, the pre predominant variant right now is the Delta variant. And whatever vaccine that we are using today is still effective against that Delta variant. We continue, of course, studying our data and we have introduced new case investigation forms so that we can look at whether we are getting any clients getting infected even after vaccination, which again once analyzed, we look at how effective our vaccines have been against this infection. With the issue of having, getting a first job and then getting infected, we still encourage that you get your next job as scheduled so that you get your full immunity that is as prescribed and as justified by the manufacturers of these vaccines. Thank you. I think uh, to be clear on, uh, on that issue of vaccines again on the mix and match, I think to be clear also is the fact that uh, we cannot start vaccinating people who have already been vaccinated with a new job before we finish with the people who have not been vaccinated. So we will not be vaccinating anybody who has been fully vaccinated with AstraZeneca and now vaccinated the same people with Pfizer. So anybody who has gotten their two doses of, uh, uh, of AstraZeneca, we will not be getting the other doses of Johnson & Johnson or, on, or the Pfizer ones that are coming in. IG, please. Thank you, CS. <clears throat> I need to clarify on the issue of the political rallies. And in my announcement and directions and instruction I've given to all members of the National Police Service, I was very clear. These meetings, according to the MOH protocols and presidential directions, stands banned. And the members of the National Police Service will enforce those directives exactly the way they are. We are I also asked cooperation from the members of public, Wanainji and Kenyans, that keep your compliance and cooperate with the members of our National Police Service, we'll have no problem. I've given and renewed the direction with the effective uh, from today. I would like to see all those meetings whatever they will attempt to take place that are stopped. That is very clear and will continue engaging with the members of public. Don't, and I advise don't attend 
don't attend the meetings so that you also keep yourself safe. Keep yourself safe from the disease and also keep yourself safe from any enforcement measures. And that will make the work of the two parties simple and easy to comply. It's a super spreader. Everybody is keen on this danger. And simply the members of National Police Service is it to ensure that everybody keeps safe. Keep safe from not attending public gathering, political rallies, and we urge the organizers also to comply. I would not like to encourage a lot of discussion on this. It is just no. The big N and the big O, no public gathering. And those are instructions I've given to the members of the National Police Service. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That brings us to the end of today's media briefing. And thank you so much for the question that you've been. You, you want Jeff to take? Dye.